You might have seen some leaks on the upcoming Pixel foldable phone, but you probably haven't seen something like this. This is a blank model of the Pixel Fold, and it's supposedly dimensionally accurate, like all the camera positioning, all the screen positioning, the dimensions of the product, like even the hinge dimensions, everything supposedly, I've been told, accurate to the actual phone. I think some case manufacturers use stuff like this to make the actual cases for the device. Uh, but when I got this thing in, and I looked at all the details and all the proportions of everything, there's just so much interesting stuff to talk about. So first, right off the rip, when I popped this thing out, I was like, holy cow, this is so thin. It's very slender for a foldable device. And when I throw the caliper onto it, I was measuring it at 5.7 millimeters, which is, it's just not expected coming from a Pixel product. And if you throw it, uh, the caliper onto like the camera hump area, like the bump, it adds another like two and a half millimeters. Um, but overall, <laughs> You know, pixels aren't known to be super thin devices, right? I just was not expecting a really skinny foldable from them, but it looks like it will be. Now on the back, we have a camera system that has room for three lenses. The camera bump has rounded edges, which is a little different from the kind of flat straight edge styling we see on the Pixel 6 and Pixel 7. This is just kind of nicer if your hands run across it. Uh, on the front, we supposedly have a 5.79 inch display. And then inside we have a 7.67 inch display. But we're gonna come back to screens because I wanna talk about the hinge because I would argue that the hinge is the most important part of foldable technology. I think like the hinges define the product experience. The different brands that make foldable phones and foldable tech, it's really the hinge that separates the products. And also it's the thing that affects like the durability and the crease and like everything. So let's talk about hinges. This is a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4. And when you fold it up, you can see that there's a gap between the two halves of the phone. And all Samsung foldables have a gap like this, or at least currently. Now the portion of the screen that gets folded each time that you open or close the device is represented by this red line here. And the way that Samsung's hinges are designed, the screen actually gets bent onto itself in a pretty acute angle. Like the hinge is meticulously engineered, right? It's dual axis, it has water resistance, it's got brushes to keep dust out. But one of the consequences of that hinge design is that there's a fairly noticeable crease. Like it's not super annoying when you use it, but if you look for it, you can spot it pretty easily. Now, the Oppo Find N products have a completely different style of hinge. When you fold up the Oppo Find N2, there's no gap in between the two halves and the display panel is bent in a more relaxed angle. So the devices have these multi-axis hinges and the screen is bent into what they refer to as like a water drop shape in terms of kind of the, the curvature of that bend. And the result is that you have a product with less of a crease. So it's just not as pronounced, right? Again, the user experience is it's so subjective, right? Some people hate it, some people don't care or mind it, at, mind about it at all, but like you can see there's a very big difference in the crease visibility. And a lot of that comes from the hinge design. Now I've been told that the Pixel Fold device, the Pixel Foldable is gonna be using a hinge style that is much more like the Oppo. So a multi-axis uh, multi hinge that folds it completely flush so when you Close it up, there's no gap. And with hopefully a more gently curved screen when it's all folded up. All right, onto the screens. So the front screen looks like it's actually gonna be flat. There is a curvature to the device, but it looks like the screen ends before it hits that rounded portion. Uh, so I'm thinking full, flat front screen. In terms of one-handed usability, this is decent. Like it's not, like when it compared to like the Oppo Find N, this is very one hand usable. At least for me personally, I don't have like gigantic hands. I have fairly average hands. And when I reach across, like the usability, reachability of that front screen is great. On the uh, Fold products, I, I just find them narrow. I mean, I've gotten used to these and if you use them for long enough, you just kind of get used to it. But I do find like the vertical reachability a little not, not appealing to me. This I mean, I'm not, I'm not manipulating an actual screen here, but I feel like it's a little wide for my taste. I think it is something that you get used to. Uh, now inside, it's a different story. Actually, real quick, there is no camera cutout on the front, so I'm assuming a punch hole camera on the front. But inside, we have a very visible camera cutout on the top right. Uh, for one, camera cutout, but secondly, the top and bottom bezels are quite thick. I measured them to be around five and a half, six millimeters. It's just abnormal to see a device, especially a foldable device with such thick bezels. Now, I can't think of any reason why they would do this other than cost, right? I'm assuming that to have 
bezels like this. They have to, you know, the way that they're wrapping the screen and stuff, it's a little bit more cost effective. And if the reason why they're doing this is to kind of hit a particular price point, I don't think I mind all that much. Like, I don't know the pricing that this will be, but it, you know, if I'm thinking that if they did have very thin bezels on the top and bottom and they had to have a punch hole camera to accommodate for that, I feel like the price would be jacked up another, I don't know, two, maybe 300 bucks. So I, eh, everyone's, eh. I would say that it's worth it. I feel like for Pixel to do this, because they're never about like the most sleekest and elegant hardware, I think that it's not just like acceptable, I think it's almost expected from them. If you really think about the kind of technology that's going behind this kind of product. But the screen looks very nice. I'm looking at a piece of plastic here. But when I throw this into After Effects, I think that the display would look really good. One thing I noticed is that when I compared the screen on the Oppo Find N2 to the Pixel Foldable, the screens have the same vertical height. They're both 124 millimeters if you measure them from top to bottom. But the resolution is, different. So I think the Pixel Foldable will have actually a slightly higher pixel density than what was on the Oppo Find N2. But you compare like the horizontal, is this going to pick up? Yeah. Um, it's just like a way wider screen, right? Like this is just like a, it's like an almost like an extra inch of screen, maybe not, but close to an inch of screen. And it just makes for better widescreen content. If you're viewing anything in full screen, that bigger screen is nice. Uh, but again, it does affect the one hand usability of it. One other thing I noticed that was kind of neat, the speaker array. So they have a speaker cutout on the top left and there's also a speaker cutout on the bottom right, but that allows you to have stereo sound in every orientation. So if you're like opening it in book form, you get sound coming out left and right. But then if you flip it, it's also left and right just because of how they've oriented the speaker system. Kind of neat. Now, in terms of form factor, I prefer the kind of wide body form factor more than I do like the tall boy stuff. I don't know why I'm using those terms, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Like the wide devices, like the Oppo and this Pixel foldable. I like the way that it feels in my hand uh, more than the the Samsung folds. It's not for everybody though. I'm not like saying that that's like everybody should choose. It's it's very subjective. But I will say that regardless of which kind of style that you like, the fact that Google would introduce a player into that foldable space, it just puts incentive for developers and even Google's own launcher to just take advantage of foldable screens way more. I just think that it's as popular as the Samsung devices are, there's a ton of apps and there's a ton of just built-in functionality that isn't tuned perfectly for foldable devices. And I think just the existence of that Pixel Foldable is gonna be really nice for that whole technology. Uh, I wanna wrap up this conversation with a topic of price. So one of the reasons why Pixels are so appealing, just like Pixel products in general, is because their price, use, it's usually it's like two or 300 bucks cheaper than Samsung or Apple iPhone flagship equivalents. But this device, the Pixel Foldable, is supposedly gonna be coming in at $1,700. And this is just a rumor, and I have no way of gauging the validity of that rumor, but if that's actually the case, and this is a $1,700 phone, that's just not, that's just not the price that I would have expected from this product line. Um, but we'll have to see. Foldables, I, I mean, I'll be honest, getting this thing in the mail was such a treat. Like I wanted to share this thing with you guys. It's just so weird to see what th their implementation of this technology would be. And I hope you guys enjoyed this thing. I know it's just a hunk of plastic, but you can. there's just so much that you can tell just from it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed it.